spread all the way through the Appalachians in its entirety and worked out well. It's easy to understand when you think about it. So Cherokee society is matriarchal, right? That means mama makes the rules. Well, for the British, that's hard to understand. They don't understand how uh, a woman can culturally run the show. Well, for the Irish, Scotch-Irish immigrants that come here, it's a little different ball game. They're used to having stronger women. And you know why? What's your name? Dirty. 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 Okay, Dorothy. So this is why. This is why it's easy for. This is why it's easy for Irishmen to understand a woman running the show. Cause one of these days, Dorothy. One of these days, you're drinking and you're running around, you're gonna break your poor mama's heart, Dorothy. You understand what it's saying to you? Sounds like my mother. Yeah, that's exactly. One of these days, you're drinking and running around, you're gonna break your poor mother's heart, and you're going to be to blame for you and your proud ways of it to you. So, it's, it's, it's understandable, you know. So German, she sounds like that. They blend. The society blended right in, and they could understand each other a whole lot better than. And we could understand Irish people, the Chalagi people could understand Scotch-Irish immigrants a whole lot better because they weren't coming in here. They were trying to assimilate with cultures instead of coming in here and trying to dictate culture like the British did when the British came through. All right, we're now the British and we are here and we own everything. Your butt now belongs to the king. Surrender to the crown or die. <laughs> so, we don't do that. Chalagi people, well, so uh, indigenous peoples in general throughout uh, throughout what would become the Americas, we didn't understand a man sitting in a chair across an ocean owning something that's never been owned before. So like the concept of owning the dirt that we're standing on is a completely new concept to this faction. Our, our peoples didn't understand it. How can you own something we belong to? We belong to the earth. We're beings of the earth. We move around on the earth. We we eat from things that eat from the earth. We pick and eat things that grow out of the earth. How can somebody sitting in a chair across an ocean own this? It's not a concept that's, that's understood. And so there would be a falling out between the two cultures, the Cherokee and the British. They talk about in the film up in the visitor center, they talk about the Cane Creek Massacre. Have y'all seen the film? Okay. So here's the thing. In this time period, our peoples had what's called a blood law. And what the blood law meant was, let's say, what's your name? Andrew. Let's say, Andrew, that you're a British soldier, and I am Cherokee Wagulee here, and I have a trading post here, and you want something I have, but you don't have what I need to trade on, so I tell you no. Okay, so you rise up and shoot me. Okay, well, Cherokee blood law dictates that my little brother here can rise up and shoot you or your brother and we're square. That's Cherokee blood law. Alive for a life. And we're square. Okay, that's how that works. So think about it this way. The Cane Creek Massacre, 24 to 27 British officers and soldiers were killed, right? At Cane Creek by their Cherokee escorts. Well, based on the blood law that I just told you about, what does that tell you must have happened? They had to have killed 24 to 27 of us for us to turn around. It's not quite a massacre when you think about it like that, is it? It's just like when my people in the creek, you know, the Battle of Fort Mim, that's what well, they call it, a massacre of Fort Mim, because we cut a bunch of white people. It's a massacre when we kill white people, but it's a battle when they kill. But, um, that's true.